Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Chris, Billy's behind the camera. And I'm gonna go through how to make real simple, easy burgers. So tonight I'm gonna make burgers for supper, but what I hate about cooking videos is that everything's already perfectly displayed. So I'm gonna show you beginning to end what it actually takes to do this. First, we've got our hamburger thawed out. It's been sitting out for a little bit. It's still cold, but it's not frozen anymore. So I need to get my pans out, get the stove going, get my oil out, get my salt and pepper out. I need a, probably a cutting board so I can shape the burgers, and then we'll get to cooking the burgers. Nice little cutting board from last year. Really like these cast iron pans. Uh, something about cast iron, it just, I can kind of taste the difference between this and non-stick. So, as long as you use enough oil, the grease of the hamburgers shouldn't have a sticking problem. So I'm going to start my burners at about medium. I'm going to use avocado oil. I have a blend of salt and pepper. It's just uh, coarse kosher salt and fresh ground black pepper. I'm going to do what's called a smash burger. It's basically where you take the hamburger meat, you make a ball, you put it down and you smash it all the way down. It cooks really fast. It's nice for a quick, easy burger. I'm usually a grill guy, so I would do that. But here in Minnesota, it's winter time. It's not always comfortable. It takes a lot of extra effort to get the grill going. So we're going to avoid that. So I'll begin shaping my burgers, but first it's important to keep your dirty, grimy mitts clean. I believe industry standards like 20 seconds or something like that. Somebody decided to make a stupid sticker in all the bathrooms that say that. So for those of you following along, if you cared to count, I probably broke the rules a little bit, but soap and water, soap and water in my book. So we're gonna get our hamburger out. Get a uh, paper plate so I can put my shaped meatballs on it. We go to Costco a lot, and I get the big ground uh, uh, ground beef. It's usually between six and a half, seven pounds. So then I come home, I have a scale, and I measure it all out, and I put it in Ziploc bags and throw it in the freezer for when we want to use them. So, all right, as you can see, it's just a it's just a ball. Of, all meat, so we're just gonna go through and we're gonna do that. As I do this, we'll use the the trick of editing, and I'm sure Billy will speed this up and it'll go super fast because I'm not gonna go any faster than what I'm going right now. Then what I'll do is, the dogs don't know this yet, even though they're probably listening, I'm gonna cook this little gem up for them super quick at the end, just as a nice little uh, nighttime snack. And for those of you out there who don't believe in giving your dogs table scraps, well, we have two little uh, mini schnauzers that terrorize the ever loving heck out of us, and this gets them off our back quickly. Unfortunately, I do not have a flat spatula, or one that's solid all the way across, so I was thinking of how I was going to do this. And here's what I'm going to do. So as you can see, now it's flat. I'm gonna use that to smash the burgers. Along with this. All right, so now we're gonna go over to the stove. So what we're gonna do is exactly what I said. We're gonna do some avocado oil. And then we're going to do a little bit of salt and pepper. 
kind of hear it going there. So, first one, here we go. We're gonna put it down, and then we're gonna smash it. Well, this isn't working perfectly, but it's certainly working here a little bit. So what we need to do, is we need to get this other one going here now. So we're gonna go ahead and throw that in there. We're gonna maybe do just a little bit more avocado oil. We're gonna do a little bit on the back side of this thing here. Yep. And we're just gonna go bit of seasoning quick on this top side there. As you can see this one's starting to look pretty nice. If you want to get in there, the edges are starting to brown a little bit, which is what you want. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove our nifty little tool here if it'll come off. We're going to get ready to go ahead and flip this one here shortly. Now I'm a big bacon guy, so I would definitely recommend doing bacon for all intents and purposes. We're not going to do that tonight. Just want to keep things pretty simple. Just want to break her up just a little bit. Look at that. That's going to look real nice. Now what we're going to do is we're going to throw our cheese on there. We're going to go ahead and flip our other one over here. That one looks like it could maybe go up just a scope. That's one thing you got to remember is when you're doing something like this, you know, I'm not... These are two completely different scenarios. I'm doing burgers, but over here I got a large skillet that's got more surface area, so you got to control your heat a little bit differently than this little one where it's more concentrated. So, all right, yep, that's about right where I want her. So one thing that I did not show that I will show on this next one is with the cheese. You see here how it's not melted perfectly. Well. There's two ways of doing this. You can put it on right away and overcook the bottom, or you can cover it. So what we'll do is we'll cover our next one. We're gonna throw some salt and pepper down. Go ahead and give this one a quick little smash. All right, then we go. Nice thing about smash burgers is they cook really quickly and you know you don't have to worry about the inside being done when you get a burger this thick. Throw a little bit of seasoning on the top. Here's what I meant about covering it. You just take a plate and you cover it quick. One thing to remember when you're cooking with cast iron, whether you're using cast, I've used it on the grill, I've used it on the stove here, used it in the oven. Remember, cast iron, this handle right now is very hot. I'm not gonna grab that and walk around the kitchen with it, okay? So just be, be mindful of that, that this stuff gets really hot and it holds its heat. It doesn't just go away. Well, we're gonna go ahead and flip this. There we go. And then what we're gonna do here, like I said before, you put a piece of cheese on it, and you cover it, 
I don't have anything to cover it. I guess you could do this. I did cover it on this smaller one and the end product is over here. So, next is building the burger. I like to do things from beginning to end all the way through. I know you guys get it, you know how to make a burger, but why not show you how I do it? So, we need ketchup. We need mustard. And we need pickles. I like pickles on my burger. Technical difficulty, we found the mustard. Uh, ketchup, we buy it in bulk and then we put it in these nice little uh, squirt bottles. Kids love that. Shake your condiments, people. Nobody likes the disgusting juice that comes out before all the actual stuff you're trying to get out, okay? Shake your condiments. So for pickles, we are gonna cut our own. Maybe. It stops playing hard to get. This is the one. Knew it. A burger with all pickles is not a burger, it's an imposter. I'm gonna take our burger. And again, this is not fancy at all. We can get super fancy some other time. This is basic, just walked in the house. I need to throw supper together real fast for people. Burgers. I like to put all my stuff on the bottom bun. A little ketchup. And just a little bit of mustard. Pickles on here. And then we'll go ahead and throw our perfectly cooked cheeseburger patty on there. Perfect. I'm gonna be totally honest, first time ever making a burger this way. I mean on the stove, smash burger style. Um, I, I, I could get on board with this. This, this, is, this is not bad. Most important thing, when you're making a burger, if you're making it yourself, do what the fast food joints don't do. Get a little bit of everything in every bite. That's what really makes it home cooking. You make it your own way, you can get everything in a bite. Some pickles, some ketchup, some cheese, some mustard, some meat. You don't get this half-baked idea of throwing half the meat off the one side and all the tomatoes and everything on the other side. Hmm. Really glad I tried this. If you enjoyed what you saw here and uh, would like to see more experiments like this from us, please uh, go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button and uh, maybe put down in the comment what you'd like us to try. Until next time, thank you. Good night.